Varicose veins. Varicosity is the penalty for verticality against gravity. It means that the blood has to flow from the lower limbs back into the heart against gravity because of the upright posture in human beings. But due to many risk factors, it results in a condition which is called as varicose veins. So definition of varicose veins, varicose veins are dilated, tortuous, elongated, superficial veins of the limb. Types of varicose veins, we have the primary varicose veins and secondary varicose veins. In primary varicose veins, the main cause is because of congenital weakness in the vein or congenital absence of valves or any other genetic abnormalities in the gene. Secondary varicose veins are mostly seen in women because of the following causes pregnancy, pelvic tumors, oral contraceptive pills, they alter the viscosity of the blood, congenital arteriovenous fistula and progesterone. This progesterone dilates the vessel walls. Risk factors for varicose veins is height that is all the tall individuals are predisposed to develop varicose veins, weight that is all the obese individuals, prolonged standing occupation for example in policemen, shopkeepers, the left side is more affected as compared to the right side, females are more prone as compared to males, increasing age and wearing tight corsets or any tight jeans. Anatomy of the venous system of the leg. So we have the superficial system, the perforators and the dip system. In the superficial system, we have the long syphenous veins, the short syphenous veins and the tributaries. Out of which the long syphenous veins is important. So the long syphenous veins starts in the foot, that is in the dorsal aspect of the foot, in front of the medial malleolus, from there to the medial side of the leg and joins the femoral vein at the siphonofemoral junction. Then we have the perforators. The perforators join the superficial system to the dip system. There are total five perforators present, three leg perforators, one knee perforator which is situated between the leg perforator and the thigh perforator that is below the knee and thirdly we have the thigh perforator. In the dip system it comprises of the femoral veins and the popliteal veins. Clinical examination or clinical features we have the signs and the symptoms. Inspection of the signs should be done in a standing position. The signs include dilated veins in the thigh, the knee or the leg, secular dilatation at the siphonofemoral junction, a blowout sign that is localized dilation of the veins due to perforator insufficiency, ankle flare which is seen around the medial malleolus, ulcerations, eczema, bleeding and dermatitis. Under symptoms, we have dragging pain, night cramps, itching or skin thickening. Night cramps occur due to heaviness. That is when the patient lies in a supine position, pulling of the blood occurs in the lower limbs or in the legs. So less oxygen and nutrients are supplied to the muscles causing lactic acid formation which further results in night cramps. Classification of chronic lower extremity venous disease which is also called as the CEAP classification. The first one is C which stands for clinical signs. It is graded from 0 to 6. E etiology that is the cause can either be congenital, primary or secondary. A for anatomic distribution which includes either the superficial, the perforators or the dip system. T for pathophysiologic dysfunction 
which can either be obstruction or due to reflux. Under clinical signs, grade 0 means no visible or palpable signs seen. Grade 1 is telangiectasis or reticular veins. Telangiectasis means that the diameter of the vein is less than 1 millimeter and reticular veins is when the diameter of the vein is around 1 to 3 millimeter or ankle flare might be seen. Grade 2 is varicose veins. Grade 3 is edema without skin changes. Grade 4 skin changes due to venous system disorders or venous disease. Grade 5 skin changes with hilled ulceration. Grade 6 skin changes with active ulceration. A few special tests which are performed in varicose veins are the first one is the cough impulse test also called as the Morrissey's test which is done to check for siphonofemoral incontinence. Patient stands in an upright position. Therapist places the finger at the siphonofemoral junction. You need to ask the patient to cough. If a thrill is felt by the fingers at the level of the siphonofemoral junction, then this test is considered to be positive. Secondly, we have the Trendelenburg test. Patient lies down in a supine position. The affected leg is elevated above the level of the heart so that the vein is emptied. The siphonofemoral junction is occluded using the thumb, that is the therapist's thumb, and the patient is made to stand. This Trendelenburg test comprises of two parts. Trendelenburg 1, here the therapist releases the thumb or the tonicate. If there is sudden gushing of blood above downwards, the test is considered to be positive for siphonofemoral incompetence. For Trendelenburg 2, the therapist does not release the thumb, but if slow filling of the blood is seen, it occurs due to perforator incompetence. Then we have the multiple tonicate test which is done to check for the perforators. Patient lies down in a supine position and the leg is elevated. As the name suggests, multiple tonicate. So it means that the first tonicate is applied or tied around the middle of the thigh second tourniquet below the knee and the third tourniquet above the medial malleolus. You need to check for the appearance of veins to identify which perforator is affected. Then we have the Schwartz test. The patient stands in an upright position. The therapist's left hand fingers are placed over the dilated vein and the right hand's index finger taps the vein below. If a palpable impulse is felt, it suggests valve incompetence. Then we have the modified Perth's test, which is done to rule out deep vein thrombosis or DVT. Patient stands in an upright position. Tonicate is applied at the siphonofemoral junction and the patient is asked to walk briskly. If the patient complains of pain in the calf muscle, DVT or deep vein thrombosis is considered to be positive. Then we have the Figgins method which is also done to detect the site of the perforators. Under investigations, the first one is Doppler's ultrasound. Under Doppler's ultrasound, we check for two signs. One is the Mickey Mouse sign and the second one is the Siphonus eye sign. In the Mickey Mouse sign, the femoral artery, the femoral vein and the long siphonous vein mimics the Mickey Mouse. Therefore, it is called as the Mickey Mouse sign. And in the siphonous eye sign, the cross-sectioned siphonous vein resembles like an eye. Therefore, it is called as the siphonous eye sign. The other investigations include venography, which is rarely done. Platsimography, which measures the volume changes in the leg 
by placing a light emitting diode above the medial malleolus and the patient performs tiptoe movements. Let's understand the pathophysiology of varicose veins. It can occur because of obstruction or due to venous reflux as we have discussed in the CEAP classification of varicose veins. Obstruction can occur either because of pregnancy or increased intra-abdominal pressure and venous reflux occurs due to incompetent valves which cause backward flowing of the blood. Further, increase in the venous pressure also causes vasodilation of the veins. Management of varicose veins The first part is medical management. Administration of vasoactive drugs, for example diosmine and hesperidine. What these vasoactive drugs do is that they prolong the vasoconstriction effect and increase the venous return. Surgical management includes Strandelenburg's operation, subfacial ligation of the cocket and dog, subfacial endoscopic perforator surgery. Conservative management includes elastic compression stockings. Usually 20 to 30 mm AG are recommended. It should be worn from the ankle to below the knee as above the knee stockings are difficult to wear and tend to roll down. You need to make an important note over here that compression stockings are different from normal tight corsets or stockings as tight jeans and corsets were also considered to be a risk factor. So what happens when you wear tight corsets or tight stockings is that there is equal amount of pressure which is put over the entire lower limb or the leg but in case of compression stockings the pressure is present maximum at the distal end that is at the calf region or the malleolus and as you move proximally that is towards the knee and the thighs the pressure decreases so it produces a pumping effect at the level of the calf muscle other conservative management includes rest with limb elevation Active and passive exercises to allow calf muscle pumping and ensuring that the patient walks correctly, that is, heel down first. A few points to remember. The clipper trinone syndrome is also called as the valvulus syndrome. It is a congenital venous abnormality wherein the superficial and the deep veins do not have valves. Second point. Pain due to varicose veins is relieved on exercises. In contrast, pain due to arterial disease gets worse on exercise.